and hello all my fellow nerds out there, this is Oracle Nerd Richie, and welcome back once again to Horror Tale, a text-based adventure, adventure by Dark Petal, <coughs> Dark Petal 16. Uh, this is, so last time we were just being shown what encounters were by Flowey, and yes, I believe this is the Horror Tale version of Flowey, where it's just one mono, monochromatic eye, it's, it's literally just one eye, there's no mouth, no nose, it's just an eye. Anyways, Flowey ends the encounter. <sighs> there are many monsters left in, in this area, says Flowey. Keep quiet, says Flowey. Keep quiet and you should avoid them. Flowey stretches out a vine and points down the direction of one of the tunnels. Take that tunnel. Follow the purple path. If you make it through the door, I'll show you to where, the ne where to go next. Through the door? You'll see. You'll see, he whispers. The flower burrows underground and you are left alone. In the dark. You take... You take out your phone. No service. No surprise. You still try to send a message out, but it fails to go through. That that's okay. At least you can still use a flashlight. You, you hold your phone loosely and look around you. The cave walls are dark and mostly smoothed out. There are several tunnel openings in this area, but only one with a faded purple path that you should see. Take a deep breath and start your journey. It's silent, aside from the sound of your footsteps as you walk down the tunnel. Smooth walls have, have, ma have many chips and cracks in them, showing signs of age and decay. You run, you run your right hand along the si side of the wall, feeling bits of rock crumble away at your touch. Your slippers echo with each step. The tunnel diverges at several points, but the only but only one path is the faded purple flower we told you about. Get to it. You keep your ears sta strained to listen for anything, anything at all, but but there's only silence in your footsteps. You think back to back to the ghost that chased you down here, to your debts. When you woke up this m this morning, you never anticipated this how your day would go. You weren't even aware that the mountain has a cave system. It's amazing, really. So many people climb up and down this mountain and walk here in the summer. Did no one knew about this? There's only one way to escape, and you're on the opposite side of the underground. Even those who have fallen closer to it couldn't make it. People must have fallen before, but none made it out. <coughs> Informa information can only be passed on by survivors. Even so, someone must have found an entrance and chose not to repel or belong inside, right? Maybe? Maybe? It's hard to say. If they if they did, why would they bother to tell anyone? Would you tell would you tell tell someone you found found a rock on a mount, mountain mountain? <coughs> rock on a mountain? A vis visitor could have seen an entrance or a hole and never thought about it? People are advised to stick to the paths or designate campgrounds. Most of them down. Most of them down. And those that that don't never venture far. Still, you would wouldn't it there be more search and rescue? You shake your head, already reminded of the ghost. Again, information can only be passed on by survivors. Ghosts have got an entire group. Group? Who would report them missing? Not to mention you're not involved in law enforcement. You have no reason to be told told about missing tourists. Tourists. The only, the only time ho the whole town gets involved is if the local goes miss goes missing, and if it's been decades since that happened, it couldn't even be confirmed they went they went missing in the mountains. Just some girl who disappeared one day after another, one day after school. It's a surreal experience. Huh. Path ends at a gate. It's rusted shut. You see it continues on past it, but you need to open the gate first. You look around the area. The path has led, led you into a wide room with faded and cracked pur dark purple bricks. You, shine, you turn your flashlight along the wall. You see nothing but bricks. You move it down to the floor and see exactly that. Floor. You move it up to the ceiling and, oh my stars. Bodies. Dangling chains and hooks Hooks with stains and rust. There's there are dozens of chains dang, 
opening from the ceiling. In between those chains are corpses of humans and animals. Each of them looked completely drained, as if all the life was sucked out of them and mummified. Your gaming mother's emptied sockets stared down at you. The, mo the, mo the monsters will pull at your soul, says Flowey, and they'll try to leech up, leech the magic off of it. You swallow roughly, not wanting to imagine what it must feel like. You gaze, you pull your gaze away. Your stomach nods together like a pretzel. With reluctance, you shine your flashlight back up, see if you can find a chain to pull. One of them must walk to the gate, right? You cautiously eye them. There are only a handful that are long enough that you can just jump to pull them down. Pull them with the hook for a handle, pull the one with most stains on it. One that looks most pristine. Pull one that looks most rusted. Pull the one that is just barely out of reach. Oh dear. I don't think any of these options are good. <laughs> Then again, this is horror tales, so... And come on, we know the pristine one is definitely gonna kill me. Um, shoot. What can I do here? I, I mean, we all know the first option is never gonna work. Let's go with the one that looks the most rusted. You yank it down, hard, click. You grin to yourself as you fall back down. The sound of the gate unlocking can be heard. Try- Oh, there we go. See, I told you, it's always the rusted ones. Triumphant, you push through the rusted gate. It creaks loudly. <laughs> when, you've when you've made it through the air side, it's going to shut behind you. Okay, not so bad. You think to yourself. And, and your right foot presses on something. Click, click, click. You hear something go off to your right. You quickly turn your flash to the face, but blades erupt. Abruptly impale you. You don't even have time to see what happened because you're because one moment you're standing fine, the next moment you're just decapitated, dissipated, dissipated and dead. You die. Try again. Human, you're not immediately returning. That's a good first step. Now you shake your head. You are going to return, but you're simply reviewing what happened. Price me most frustration. It looks like the area is trapped, but you'll need to be mindful where you step. I give goodbye to a pirate who reluctantly waits back. Try again. <laughs> you go back through the gate. Now you shine your flashlight down the path. You can finally make out outlines of certain spots faded in purple. Pressure plates? You lightly step around them and continue your journey. Find more traps as you go. Thankfully, it's not that, dif that difficult to spot them. Traveling in, in a man-made tunnel that's mostly smooth. Any trap is an oddity that sticks out like a scarecrow in snow. Luck luckily, lucky you! You'd hate to have to do this more than difficult terrain like, like a forest at night or something. You continue walking down a path, pathway, moving slowly and and, and carefully. You, you, deter you determine not to die. Pressure plate there, that area looks sketchy, better stay away. Keep on the purple path, you continue on. Rooms and tunnels change slightly, but all, but all have faded, cracked brick walls and are pitch black aside from your flashlight. There, there's only one path forward, until it splits. You have three paths, one, one in the middle you think is the, right, is the right shade of purple to continue on. But, well, you could explore the other two ways, why not? <laughs> okay, left, right, left, middle, right. I kind of want to just go down the middle because... <laughs> the middle one it should be the right shade of purple, right? I mean, you know, when, you know, I mean, it's something I always say, when in doubt, you middle it out, right? So, so, let's go with the middle tunnel. The path goes to several more minutes. As you progress, you notice that a lot of tunnels connect this path. On, on your right and left, every other meter, there's a dark hole in the wall. You have no way to see what's down that, that hole or path without, without walking past it first. 
Your phone flashlight isn't strong enough to see more than a couple of meters in front of you. Shining your light down the holes proves useless. In all convincing blackness that powers your light, you strain your ears, trying to, to listen for anything. All, all you hear is the sound of, of your breathing. You wonder if there's anything down at all down deep those tunnels. You've, you've been too scared to investigate fully. You know, you know you're not alone down here. <coughs> you have no reason to think that there wouldn't be things down here watching you. You let out a slow breath and continue walking. You're alive. You can do this. You're filled with determination. As long as you're alive, you find a way to make it through. Although you really don't want to die again. N none of your deaths have been pl pleasant. And thinking of that ghost. A shiver goes down your spine. Instinctively, you you know you have to keep have to keep away from the go that ghost. Your men quite a quiet whisper in the shadows. You flinch in surprise, twisting your body to look down down the abysmal tunnel. Tall, raggedy, goat-like mon monster steps out. Toriel! That has to be Toriel, right? Please tell me that's Toriel. She, she wears a long purple and white robes that are torn in many places. Her, eye, her eyes glow a sickly pale green as she looks at you. Hello, human, she says, strange, always smiled and unnerves you. I am Toriel. Who might you be? You return her greeting and introduce yourself. You must be lost, she says. You hold her hands hands to her chest. You notice there was a slight tremble to them. Would you like help leaving here? It sounds nice. No, thank you. You were no, thank you. You were not lost. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to get close to any of the monsters, so I don't think we should trust her. I mean, Flowey did say not to get close to any of the monsters. No, thank you. I'm not lost. It makes a small whimpering noise. Uh, are you tired, perhaps? Would you like to rest? Uh, no thank you, I'm not tired. Hungry? You must be hungry. I have pie. No thank you, I'm not hungry. He raises a hand to grip the side of her head. Her people would shrink. Hurt? Are you hurt? I can heal. I can help. No thank you, I'm not hurt. Would you like some tea? She, she's it, as in a pleading tone. It, it's been ages since I've had company. Please. No thank you, I do not want tea. She falls silent. Why? Toyo asks in a small voice. I don't, I don't like, I don't want. Her eyes fills with tears and she starts to laugh, to laugh in her croaked, raspy voice. I don't blame you, she croaks out. So I hope you won't blame me either. She throws her hands out. A burst of orange and red light like envelops her hands. Burning flames lace through, through the air and surround you. Excruciating needle-like pain, pain dots your entire skin. Searing heat overtakes you as as the fire eats away at your skin. Yeah, something's telling me that we just died. <laughs> you scream as you watch your skin charcoal and flake off, feeling raw, red, squishy flesh. Yep. I'm sorry. You've died. Try again. Well, death by goat monster was not on your, not the way you thought your day would lead you. You rub your face, your hands still shaky from the pain. Human. Tall Reaper walks slight, lightly across the water, stand before you. Plain concern covers his features. Are you okay? That was an intense death. You smile kindly. You should rest. You're going to shatter your soul if you keep going like this. On like this. And won't, and won't that be a hassle to clean up? Won't that be a hassle to clean up? Draws a low monotone voice. A figure emerges from swarming shadows. A Reaper, half the size of a pirate. Is that who I think it is? He comes over the water. He has a smile on his face, but you feel nothing warm, nor kind about it. If Papyrus's presence calms you, then this skeleton's presence unnerves you. You subconsciously step closer to Papyrus. What a ghastly rea reaction the new skeleton will. Look at you, shaking like a leaf in the storm. You kind of realize you were trembling. <sighs> That's enough, Sans! Papyrus says Papyrus. She has been through a lot. Papyrus offers you his hand. It's okay now, Richie. Suits, suits for Papyrus. 
I'll take good care of you. All right. Rest well with me. You don't have to be hurt anymore. You refused. You'll try again. But we had to try again. Human? Oh. Yep. Here, introduce yourself. Oh, wait, we can actually go back if we wanted to. But I don't know why we would. No, thank you. You're not lost. No, thank you. You're not tired. You're not hungry. You're not hurt. I want tea. Stars up. Either stars above. You, you jumped into your sight. Decided to try and dodge. There was a wave of fire that blocked your entire path. Burning flames laced through, through the air and surround you. <sighs> Damn it. Human. Fire's wor worldly greets you. Please. Human, please. Yes, human, please. Bite, waste their time more. Sans, this soul has done nothing wrong. There is no reason for, for you, to, you to harvest. I'm, I'm off the clock, bro. He says. Sim simply here to enjoy the show. And enjoy it politely. Too exhausted. Really worked myself to the, to the bones today. <sighs> he still makes puns. Papyrus groans. In the two reapers bicker with each other, fills you with the term. Ah, no! Try it again. Uh, nope, you spin past her before she can burn you again. <laughs> uh, yep. I'm not gonna read the same dialogue over and over, just, just for the sake of not repeating myself. No! Wait! Toyo cries out for you. Oh, heck no! You, you do not want to be burned alive again. Absolutely not. No, thank you. Hard pass. Your slippers slipper pound to the stone as you sprint all your might. The purple path fades, fades in color. Tunnel splits. Uh, follow your heart. Go. Follow your heart. Go left. You feel a violent tug on your soul. You've been pulled into an encounter. You sprint to the tunnel to the left. Wait, you hear Toyo's ragged voice coming as he chases after you. But please, Richie! Okay. You grip your phone using your flashlight to guide your way. You think in, dar in the darkness, you see bumps of the path ahead, ahead of you. Run around him, of course. That's a bad call. There's, there, are more, there are more of them that you couldn't see. Sorry, human. You have died. Try again. Damn it. Try this again. Okay, nope, spin faster. Left tunnel. Jump over them. You jump over the pressure plates and continue to run. <laughs> Bat splits again to three ways this time. Um, go right. You spin down the right tunnel. Your flashlight only guides you as you run. Then to your horror, you realize that, that it ends in a dead end. Damn it! Alright, here we go. Um... Uh, <sighs> Wait, did we go right last time? I just forgot. Um, let's go middle path. Middle path. I, I said stop! Toyo screams. You feel heat on the back of your neck and the entire tunnel lights up. She's throwing fire at you from behind. Duck and keep running. You duck. The flames hit, hit you anyway because you weren't low enough. You're engulfed in fire again. Damn it! Starting to smell like barbecue. Your face scrunches up as you give give him a look of displeasure. That, that is entirely uncalled for, Sans. Come on, perhaps. You know you know I blame to please. Human could smell worst. Everyone loves a good barbecue. <sighs> I am so sorry for this, human. Peaceful souls like yours can normally avoid this agony of laziness. So would Stans call you barbecue? <laughs> I didn't know what to encourage Sans, it's too funny. Here's a flat look and shake your head. Your mark tutorial must be a cereal griller with the way she's toasting you. Oh, come on. Uh, well, I can't resist giving a pun. Uh... Uh, would Sans call me barbecued? 
<laughs> Ted smiles, stretches to prepare more to despair. Not you, who? He cries out, ponder the laziest form of humor. Ungrillievable. That Papyrus doesn't relish this humor. I know. I think you're doing a great job at handling your demise. <laughs> humor, humor is best seasoning for any good stakeout. Papyrus really, really take a grill pill. Stop it. This is worse than your determination. Oh yeah. You cheerfully wave goodbye as you're reminded to re you refuse to die. Will you stop now? I was going to toss some salt on you next time. And here's the bur bird flesh smell. Try again. Okay. Okay, um... This, this time let's just sprint past. Okay, sprint past. To the left. Jump over them. Uh, middle path. <laughs> That's the ground that pass over you. You hit the ground. The flames barely graze you as they pass above you. The moment you no longer feel the heat, you spring back up and when your feet continue to sprint. Or you, you've never had to run so much before. The night has only begun, begun and you've already had to run survive twice from a ghost and now a goat monster. You don't know, know if you should be laughing or crying at this point. Regardless, you, you keep you keep moving forward. Toyo's breath, breathing becomes labored as she chases you. <sighs> Tunnel urine urine empties out out to a large cavern. The only thing in this area area that you can see is a brick ha house at the far end. The deteriorated walls and cracked windows are shut against the cave lining. The, the door is par partially open and just rusted. You dash into the house and slam the door shut behind you. You try to lock it, but it looks like the Locks are worn out. Toyo's heavy breathing tells you she's getting closer. You don't have a lot of time. Turn back around. You see there are three ways to go. Run, run down the hallway to your right. Hop over railings and go downstairs in front of you. Run to your left. <laughs> I remember from the first game. Hop over the railings. Go down. Go down the stairs. Go down the stairs. You got the wooden railings and jump over them. You plummet down the stairs below. Low. It's not far too far of a drop, but it still hurts your knee knees when you hit the steps. Oh! Toyo wheezes and swings the door open in time to see you jump over. This first pound the steps as you continue to run, Toyo gaining, gaining on you. You round the corner to, to the bottom of the stairs, and just as she, she shoots out a fireball, the plane slams into the brick stone, stonework, exploding out and barely touching you. Please! Toyo gasps as she runs. Don't leave! You keep running along, down the long hall. As you round the corner, corner you see a light ahead. At the far end of the hallway is a door that you, that's been smashed to pieces. You squint your eyes to stare at the light from the other side. You're too far away to see anything else. Trees, maybe? Your heart skips, skips a beat. Oh, have, you, have you found a way out already? <coughs> Are you free? Human. Richie. Toyo stones behind you. Flames appear to be in her hands, but they die away in seconds. Crumples to the ground, trembling from exertion. She pants and wheezes. But she's starved. She used to she used what energy she had to chase you. Leave her. You walk out the door. You don't turn back to look at her. You, you walk out of the shadow doors. Exit ruins. Safe spot to save. You have died ten times. Are you holding up on food? Babies are starving. It's dust. It is dust now. You walked away. You have abundance of berries in your pockets. Your favorite chips? You, you're pursuing a plant? The plant thinks you're joking. This is a good spot to save, so I guess I'll save here for a moment, I guess. <laughs> you're sensibly staying away from the ghost hunting you down. It's the smartest decision you can make. You have not met this monster yet. You're not this monster yet. You have not met this monster, but he is not yet aware of your Here's an option. General reminder, if you that if you're stuck, I can provide walkthroughs for each chapter with time. Okay, cool. Alright, we've made alright guys, we've made it to Snowden. Finally. Oh. Snowing. Your heart quickens as you want wonder if maybe maybe you've somehow returned to the surface. Snow is unexpected in mid-autumn. But not impossible. Your brown eyes move up up to look at the beautiful sky. You only see a cave ceiling. 
long, dark stalactites dangle above you. Squinting, you can see pale crystals inside them. They, they look surprisingly sad. A frown tugs at your lips. You stare ahead, ahead of you and notice an opening in the trees. The snow is too thick to see the path. <coughs> but there's a plain gap between the trees that suggests there's one. Just hidden. That's where you have to go, right? You were thankfully in a sweater. You you were also not so thankfully in short in shorts. The weather on the surface was fine to show off your skin. Not so much here. Here, not so much. You hope that the snow isn't too deep. And you, you don't know how long it takes to get hypothermia, but if snow is in direct contact with your skin, likely not long. It, it would be mighty un unfortunate to die of hypothermia. How far you, would you even go back in those circumstances? The timing of your death and resets have been consistent. No wonder... There, you wonder if there is a way to control it. Could you perhaps accept without needing to die? Want to further the nature of your ability? You step out of the stone doorway into the snow. Um, I think it's best, to, best if we just go forward. The snow plunges up halfway halfway to your cabs. That's not good. Well, not only we, we, will your movement be slowed since you, you have to trudge through the snow, but... <clears throat> Not only will your movement be slow since you have to trudge through snow, but it's freezing. The sharp temperature difference from the cave behind you to the snowy caves in front of you is insane. You hug yourself tighter, involuntarily shivering. Nothing to, nothing to it but to do it. <coughs> you waddle through the snow, one painfully slow step at a time. The snow crunches with each movement you make. It, it is a singular sound you hear. There is no wind. wind. There are no animals. You. Snow. <clears throat> and the trees. A tree so dark they look dead. But they don't have any other choice except to keep moving forward. If you don't know how far you have to go, but you have to believe that forward is somewhere, someplace warmer. The thought of you getting out of the snow one day fills you with determination. You walk on and on and on. <clears throat> As you walk, the snow becomes down harder. It comes down harder. You are not dressed warmly enough for this. The biting chill is unrelenting. Unrelenting as you progress. The snow directly touches your skin. The snow directly touching your skin. Skin is sharper than needles. Each gust of wind blows straight through you and chills you to the bone, further to the bone. Each step in the snow, you are dragged in the coldness you have never, never could have fathomed. Wet, freezing, and pain, all you can do is carry forward. <clears throat> Even as the snow comes down hard, you can barely see ahead. You lost track of time. You've lost the path. you lost your way. <clears throat> you just couldn't try to preserve. <sighs> Warm. Your body's getting warmer. Hotter. Uncomfortably so. You feel like you're burning up. Your sweater is too hot. Too hot it itches and grates your skin. Like a swarm of fire ants biting you. All you see in front of you is a sea of white. Broken up by strips of black. It's all the same. Everywhere you turn is the same. Stars? Where... Where are you meant to go? Your body is trembling. You tuck forward. You smell honey tickles. You smell honey tickles your nose. Warmth, comfort, the chill has vanished. You're in the most unfortunate situa situation, young soul. What does he mean? Please, he says with a warm gentle. Do not return. No, you have to. You refuse to die. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> all I see in front of you is a sea of white, broken up by strips of black. It's all the same. Every word you use is the same. I'm trying to let you forward. The smell of honey tickles your nose. No, no. Refuse. No way you... Are you... Are you... No, no. Richie, a fire says kindly. You cannot reset further. No, no. Are you really... No, please! <laughs> You're stuck in a death loop. <clears throat> you progressed too far and developed hypothermia. You weren't dressed warmly enough for the environment, and you paid the price for it. Come with me, it's time to rest. No! Damn it! Okay, this time, let's try to ponder our ability even further, though. <clears throat> what exactly is your ability, anyway? What caused it? Really to reject death itself and go back to prior time. To in time prior to your death? You 
We've always seen that kind of ability in movies where outrageous stories, magic, and technology can only go as go so far with, with how few mages there are left in the world. No further advancements have been made in magic in decades. <gasps> Did you be a mage? Somehow with magic abilities? Sure, why not? Stranger things have clearly happened. Yes, I want to believe that. Uh, there's no explanation for this, even if you aren't aware of it yet. <clears throat> no, you've never displayed this aptitude of magic in your life. There's no other reason for this. Eh, yeah, sure, why not? Stranger things have clearly happened. You wonder if perhaps you could learn to control your ability further. Could you maybe, just maybe, be sent without having to die? Go back, back before you fell? You step off the stone doorway into the snow. <clears throat> into your calves. It's the same. Oh! Nation. Oh, you can barely see head. Fine. Yep, yep, this is all the same dialogue. <clears throat> okay, so. So last time we rejected Toriel, because I think that's what we were supposed to do. Uh. What, what if we just agree with her? I'm just curious. I'm curious to see what happens if we did that. Her smiles at you. She offers you a shaky hand that you accept. Then, to your surprise, she tells you forward and starts to walk. Oh! She means to hold your hand as you walk. That's new. Her fur is surprisingly solid. She guides you down the middle tunnel. It leads to a wide cavern with purple brick house in the far, far back. The bricks are cracked and dilapidated. All the windows have cracks in them. She takes you through the front door. It's dark, even with your flashlight. She guides you through a living room, stacking books. Then <coughs> she ushers you into her into her kitchen, where she offers you a seat. Thank you, she says. Quaint kitchen. In spite of disarray outside, outside, you can see she's done her best to keep a, keep a clean home. Why does she brew, brew some tea? She pours you a cup of tea, and then one for herself. Sorry, I don't have anything else to offer you, she says apologetically. Her sickly green eyes never leave your face. It's alright. Let me know how it tastes, she murmurs. You take a sip. It's delicious. Very sweet. Sweet. Your thro throat begins to burn. As if you swallowed raw lava, your stomach is ablaze. <coughs> Blaze with pain. Pain's and nausea makes you wretch. As you, as you do, blood spurts out of your mouth. You feel it ooze out of your nose, your eyes, your entire body is burned from the inside. Wheeze, struggling to breathe. You, you throw up blood. Jesus Christ. Yep, we're dead. I can already tell. Yep. Try again. Well, death I go, monster. Not the way you thought they would leave you. Yep. Same dialogue as before. I'll try again. <clears throat> no, thank you. You're not lost. Yep, I'm tired. I'm hungry. Okay, yeah, this is the same. So, okay, so after, I had to look up a walkthrough a little bit, and I didn't, I didn't spoil anything to myself, but I looked up a walkthrough, and apparently, if your character is not dressed warmly enough, they will get stuck in a hypothermia death loop. I did not know that. <laughs> so, we're just going to be continuing on, and I actually went back to the character creator, I dressed my character as warmly as I possibly could. And hopefully this one, this attempt will work. Um, also, I'm probably gonna change the magic ability thing. There's, no, even if you aren't aware of it yet, like, there's another reason for this. Sure, why not? Stranger things have clearly happened. Alright, no places I've with your cast. That's not good. Wait. I didn't notice that. I can actually hear myself walk. Like, listen. That's so cool. It was 
close to you. Okay, let's walk on. Snow falls like a day's cool pace. You're not sure how, looking up the snow leaks condensation galactite, like swirl lazily, each land noise noiselessly into the snow and noisily into the snow on the ground and disappears. The trees taller than the houses in your town, they're taller than any trees you've seen on the surface. They climb so high. It surprises that you you they don't reach the cave ceiling. The bark is black and charcoal and limbs are bare. It's dark, but oddly enough, light light from the faded crystals in the in the selectites keep, that keep things visible to you. Shivering, you carry forward, biting a chill on looking progress. Better than what it could be, you tell, you tell yourself. Well, while not dressed for winter, you were covered enough so that the snow doesn't directly touch your skin except the flakes that land on your face. It won't matter much longer, though. Your body heat has slowly but steadily melted the snow that clings to your pants. You, you aren't yet wet, but, but you're on your way to getting there. At least you're wearing Uggs. Gran Granny already moved up. Moved your summer socks to, into storage, so you're, so you're blessedly in nice, thick, winter-worthy socks inside your Uggs. Oh, so yeah, I had to change from slippers to Uggs, that's why I'm doing. It won't keep you warm indefinitely, however, it should certainly last long enough to get through the section of the underground. Your right foot presses on something hard. Oh, you look down and see metal teeth spring, spring from the snow. Oh god, it's a bear trap! Oh, not my foot! They snap shut with a sickening crunch and clang just, be just below your knee. It's jagged cut th through your right leg. Maybe if leg below your knee is effectively cut it off. It the pain is as unregistered as you lose your balance and fall back. Bits of your flesh string it. Oh god, I don't think I want to read. Like in the in the bear trap, you fall back into the snow. Shock keeps the pain pain at bay for several moments until it registers. Oh, at the base of your lump is a burning agony that ripples through your entire body. You have no leg, yet you feel as if it's being dunked in lava. Strength ebb, the strength that strength ebbs out of you each second. You lose a absurd amount of blood. You don't don't even have any energy to shake shake within a minute. And within a minute, and blessedly soon, a teetering edge of oblivion. You're grateful for his death. They sit out on leg day already, saying this little droll catch their attention. The short reaper stands at, <coughs> stands at, okay, casually at the top of the sea of rejected stars. His permanent, his permanent smile fixed into place. You finally tell him you're trying to become a pirate. Yeah, no, trying again. <laughs> hmm. Um, uh, you know, let, let, let's do some puns with them. What's with that tone? Can't stand my leg jokes? He, he says a shit-eating grin. <laughs> you glare and look around. Where's Papyrus? There's a there's a lot more peaceful souls that need his attention. He plain sands. Can't hang around forever waiting on you. Oh. Don't worry, human. I can. You give him a withering look. Or you could do us all a favor and quietly come quietly now, he says. Definitely not for him. Try again. Okay. Bear traps under the snow. That's tricky. Time to see if you can yank one one of those branches, but you could poke it under the snow and try to find the trap. You walk through the chilly snow and reach out to grab the lowest branch you reach. It takes a couple of tr tugs until it snaps off. You can obtain this stick. Hey, there we go. Now we got the first stick that we start that they start off with in the game. You repeat the process until you until you have five sticks. Hopefully there aren't that many traps. And one stick in your right hand, you shove it under the snow and use it to poke ahead of you before you walk. It's hard to tell where the original trap was since everything looks so similar, but you, you find it soon enough. Metal teeth spring from the snow and snap the stick in, stick in half, but it resounds in clang. The noise is so loud it makes your ears ring. You stare at the st sad stick for a moment, briefly recalling your leg. Better you than me, Sir Stick. <laughs> Toss and stick aside, you you ready the next stick and carry on. Find another a minute away. You lose your third stick much, much the same way. Cautiously, you move move the outer edge of the path. Break your fourth stick that way. You use your fifth stick successfully make it over over to another tree and pull up several more sticks. 
The fifth stick is lost after after a minute of wobbling. Six lost after immediately afterwards. Seven close behind. Evidently, you have a bear trap feel. Well, stars. <laughs> There's on your back in your neck stand up. You're being watched. Oh no. You look around immediately. The snow steadily falls at a slow pace. The flakes stick at your eyelashes. You brush them away to continue your search. You find the source. It stands between the trees. It's still a stone. You stare at your brown, brown eyes wide. He's a skeleton monster. A towering behemoth half hidden under a dead, dead dark tree. He, his left eye suck is as big as a big blown out bright red eye. Of his skull is missing a chunk. The crack strips down his face. Is that Sands? He wears a raggedy dark blue jacket with a big, dirty, fluffy hood. The single eye is focused entirely on you. Ruby still. Run, 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 run. I think if I run, he's gonna chase and kill me. Um, but I think that's where I'm gonna leave this episode for now, guys. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think, share this video with your friends, and be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a single notification. I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye! You say you wanna try, but you never do, sugar there's a reason.